Hi everybody, we are back for our second video on estimating area. Um, in the first video, we did examples one and two where we started to draw rectangles under a linear function in order to estimate or overestimate area trapped. Today, we're going to continue on with um, numbers three and four. So let's take a look at what number three is asking us to do. Using 16 right-hand rectangles, we're supposed to overestimate the area trapped between that function we've been working with and the x-axis from 2 to 10. So again, I'm going to graph from 2 to 10 the linear function. Here's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So 2, 4 we know, and we go up 1 and right 1 all the way until we get to 10, 12. So here's that linear function again. Here's the exact area trapped here under this trapezoid. But we're not going to do that. Instead, we are going to do a delta x of b minus a divided by n, or 10 minus 2 divided by 16. n is 16 in this example, which is going to give us 8 sixteenths, or a half, or intervals of 0 0.5 units in length. This is going to make for a lot of skinny rectangles. So if I just start drawing them in, since you kind of have the gist of it, what's going to happen is the interval will no longer be 2 to 3. The base of my first rectangle will run from 2 to 2.5. So I will grab my height at 2.5. I'll come up to the function, hit it, come across, and down. I think I'm going to do these areas as I go so it doesn't get too confusing at the end. So let's just do the area, area 1 of this first rectangle. So estimated area with 16 rectangles will be the first area, area 1, is going to be 0 0.5 as my base. My height is going to be f of 2.5. I have to evaluate my function when x is 2.5 to get that first right-hand rectangle height. So if I go up to my function here, f of 2.5 is 2.5 plus 2. So this is going to be 0 0.5 times 4.5, which is equal to 2.25. So that's my first area. And I'm going to keep going in the same fashion. So the next rectangle will run from 2.5 to 3 on the base. I will grab f of 3 to get the height, come across and down, color him in. So area 2 will still be a base length of 0 0.5, but now I have to grab f of 3. So that's going to be 0 0.5 times 5 which is equal to 2.5. Okay, the next rectangle will run from 3 to 3.5. I'm going to have to evaluate f of 3.5. Color that in. So area 3 will be 0 0.5 times f of 3.5, which is 0 0.5 times 5.5. And that is going to be 2.75. Okay. Uh, feel free to pause this video and then fast forward. If you don't want to watch every nook and cranny of what I'm doing here, you can always pause it, do it yourself, fast forward, see if we match. Just going to keep on going like this. Next rectangle. My rectangle 4. Area 4, 0 0.5 times f of 4, which would be 0 0.5 times 6, which is 3. I mean, you might even see a pattern here. You can see we're incrementing by a quarter each time. So if I keep drawing here to finish this guy up, instead of to keep going back and forth, maybe I would just finish my drawing and then follow my patterns to get my total area. And feel free to use a ruler too. I'm not using a ruler, so my lines are not the straightest, but I think we're getting the idea here. Can you see how 
the error above the curve is minimizing again. It's starting to dwindle. There's way less overhang with these skinny rectangles than there were when we made the wider rectangles and we only made four of them. Okay, filling up this area step by step, coming up, half. Almost there. Four more to go. Come through here. Two to go. And last but not least, F of 10. All right. So, if I follow my area pattern here, here's what I'm going to end up having. Um, area 5 will simply be half times F of 4.5, which is 0 0.5 times 6.5, which should be 3.25. Area 6, 0 0.5 times F of 5, which is 0 0.5 times 7, which should be 3.5. Area 7, 0 0.5 times F of 5.5, which is 0 0.5 times 7.5, which should be 3.75. I'm running out of space here, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am just going to follow my pattern. I think you get the gist here. To save time and energy, I'm going to say that area 8 is going to be 4, that area 9, 4.25, area 10, if I'm going up by quarter, I'm going to be at 4.5, area 11 should be 4.75. Area 12 should be 5. Area 13 should be 5.25. Area 14 should be 5.5. Area 15 should be 5.75. And area 16 should be 6. Now, if I add all of these areas individually, if I add them together to get a grand total, we should be getting 66 units squared. The important thing to see in this exercise is that we started with, let's go back here for a second, same space, same area we're trying to estimate. When we made four of these, we had a lot of error we got 72 square units. When we made eight of them, we had less error, error, 68 square units. Now, we made 16 of them, less error. We get 66 square units. Now, number four says, go ahead and use geometry now to see how close the 16 rectangles actually got us. So using geometry, simple. If I just draw this trapezoid one last time from 2, 4 here, all the way out to 10, 12. If I draw this trapezoid coming through here, I know that area of a trapezoid, if I fill this in here, the formula for area of a trapezoid is half the height times the sum of the bases. So if I fill in what I know here, I know that my height is the distance between the two bases. The bases run parallel, so I'll call this base 1 and this base 2. My height is going to run the distance between them. So my height is 8 and my base lengths are 4 and 12. So half of 8 is 4, 
and 4 plus 12 is 16. So 64 units squared is the exact or true area trapped between the function and the x-axis. But what I want you to notice is how this new way of finding area, 66 units squared, is very close to the true area, 64 units squared. I wonder if, instead of making 16 right-hand rectangles, if we had made 32, I'm sure this 66 would be closer to the true area. Or if we made 64 rectangles, or 128 rectangles. The problem is, though, guys, with this type of idea, it gets difficult for your pencil point to model the mathematics on paper. Like if I wanted to make rectangles whose base lengths were a quarter unit instead of a half, can you imagine how difficult that would be to draw? Or if I wanted to make my base length an eighth of a unit long to make them skinnier and kind of model this area turning into the true area, it, the physical world and our own bodies and physical objects drawing the math, it gets in our own way. So, a man by the name of Riemann decided to take what he was doing on paper and with pictures and turn it into more of a formula that would model what we want to do on paper. So if you flip the page, we're going to fill in some blanks about what we've been doing. So it says, notice, the smaller we make delta x, the more blank our estimate of area trapped between f of x and the x-axis. So I'm hoping you're thinking the smaller we made our base lengths, the more accurate our estimates of the true area became. As we make delta x smaller, the number of rectangles approaches infinity. So this is what I was talking about. We can't model by hand an infinite number of rectangles or approaching an infinite number of rectangles, but we can contemplate it, which is what we're going to do. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to tackle how to find the exact area trapped between f of x and the x-axis using something called Riemann sums. So tune in for the Riemann sums video next.